I want to thank God for such a beautiful day. And uh, thank you for coming. How many people came at, uh, at least an hour away to come here today? All right, how many? An hour and a half. Hour and a half, anybody? Two hours. God bless you. Three hours. God bless you. God bless you. Come to the corner of the state because you want to see babies with beating hearts protected. I'm grateful that you're here. I want to introduce a very good friend, uh, a, a guy that I served on the board of Ohio Rights of Life with for many years, uh, who helped get me started in the pro-life movement back when I was writing his radio commercials uh, back in the day. He's the pastor of Doers of the Word uh, Fellowship. He is a, a pastor up in the Cleveland area. He was on the radio last night uh, talking talking about the heartbeat bill, and we invited him to come down and uh, be a part to. Uh, to kick it off with a uh, an invocation. Pastor? Did I say your name? Ernie Sanders. <laughs> Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come before you, Lord, let us have the wisdom the founding fathers had, Lord, when they came before you, knowing that you are an immutable God. Yeah. And Lord, that we come this day before you with fear and trembling and humility as Lord, as you demand, we know that you're a holy God, and we know that a holy God must judge sin, and we know that our nation is standing in the shadow of a holy and just God. And we know that our sewers have run red from coast to coast with the blood of our children. Lord, we know that this nation has much to repent of. But as we're gathered here this day, just as you raised up, the prophets of old for their day and the founding fathers for their day. Lord, you have raised us up for this day, for such a time as this. So as we gather here this day, Lord, you have demanded, you have expectations of us. Lord, we have obligations to you. Let us not take these lightly, no, Lord, knowing that you don't. So as we are here, Father God, this day, let us listen, let us seek your face. We ask for wisdom, we ask for discernment, we ask for a leading, knowing, Father God, that whether we stand or fail, that our children and their children, should you tarry, will pay the price. So again, let us learn, let us listen, Give us direction. Let us storm the gates of hell, Father. To thy glory, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, have you ever met a hero? Have you ever met a hero in life, in real life, where you got to shake their hand and say, you're a hero, you're a leader. You're taking the hit, you're on the point of the arrow, which sometimes is very lonely. But our, uh, our fearless leader, I don't think we could have picked a better sponsor of this bill. He's a guy that says what 100 emails from NARAL came in, he felt good about it. I, yeah, that's great, that's great. I, I'll tell you, that they hate this man on the other side of the state house, where the Planned Parenthood, if, if, by the way, if, if you, some of you went to the wrong rally, if they're, if they're screaming for killing babies, you're at the wrong rally. So, so I'm glad you're here. Uh, this is a guy who has stood for life. As long as I've known him, he's, he said that uh, he basically has joined the legislature because he wants to protect innocent life, he wants to protect babies. And we're grateful for Representative Lynn Watchman, the heroic prime sponsor of the Heartbeat Bill. Good day to each of you. Uh, Janet, thanks for that uh, introduction. She always, she always way overdoes it, uh, but, but thank you, Janet. Uh, thank you for coming out today. I especially want to thank all of you and many who are not here for your prayers of support uh, regarding the heartbeat bill and other pro-life legislation that we're considering here in Columbus. Uh, it is a wonderful side to be on the side of life. I've never understood how uh, others could work so hard to destroy the unborn life, but they certainly do. Uh, the uh, elections this past November sent a new crew to Columbus, and uh, we have a lot of work to do in many areas. We have a great uh, and talented uh, um, members here, here in the Ohio House of Representatives. Um, again, thanks for each of you for coming out and uh, for your support of this bill and for support of life. Uh, I know many of you are involved in uh, uh, supporting women in crisis and uh, others back home in your respective communities, and what a great mission that is to uh, be supportive of uh, a, a woman or women who may be pregnant unexpectedly, 
uh, or may have had abortions in the past, but you are a blessing uh, to, to those people who you work with, and uh, thank you for that. I want to introduce um, an attorney, and I'm not an attorney, so it's good to have an attorney around. Well, usually it's good to have an attorney around. <laughs> in, in this case, it's great to have an attorney around. Uh, Representative Bob Mecklenburg. Not only uh, am I an attorney, I'm a uh, Catholic boy from the west side of Cincinnati. We have a lot of churches uh, there, if you've been there, and that's probably because we need them. <laughs> but I will approach this on a uh, secular uh, basis, since that's the way the argument should be carried on here in the legislature. And there were those that will argue against this, uh, saying, uh, stay out of our lives. Uh, this is a libertarian issue. Not so. Every libertarian in this country fundamentally believes in certain things, namely the orderly, natural propagation of your species. And this is why so many scientists are now coming around to this issue in our favor, because they know that no other species routinely snuffs out life like the human species does. There are those who would argue against, against this on economic basis. Oh gee, we can't address this issue right now because Ohio is in deep economic trouble and we can only talk about economic issues. I understand this argument. We just spent a lot of time with the budget, but we can also walk and chew gum at the same time, can't we? Um, and let's talk about the economics of the issue here. I listened uh, to a large part of the debate on the budget last week, and those who would be against this bill spent a lot of time talking about gifted children. So many gifted children in this state. We don't have any in my district because nobody called uh, suggesting we do that, but there are so many. Hours on the House floor last week. How are we going to support our gifted children? Well, let's look at all of the gifted children the millions of gifted children who never got the opportunity, never got the opportunity to perhaps discover a cure for cancer, never got the opportunity to drive our economy, never got the opportunity. Has our economy gone better because of uh, all these millions of lives lost? I don't think so. I don't think so. Last on the legal basis, there are those who would say, oh no, we can't do this now because it's unconstitutional. Well, guess what? Seven judges in 1973 said so. But they also said that there are some issues there that maybe we need to be looking at. Maybe when the science gets a little bit further along the way, how much more science do we need? How many more advocates do we need that have come forward with physical in psychological harm due to the abortions in this state. How many more? The science is already there. We don't need to hear another heartbeat in committee, with all due respect to uh, Chairman Watchman. We don't need to see another sonogram. We know that the science is there. We also know that when Roe v. Wade was uh, initiated as a case, a ginned up case, by the way. Um, they didn't ask questions like, oh gee, it's uh, unconstitutional to bring this issue forward. No, they fought for what they believed in. So-called right of privacy. First time in constitutional history, a right of privacy was decreed by male judges, I might add. Why should we be so timid at this point? There is no major constitutional issue. Take the Dred Scott decision. There is no major constitutional issue that is ever overturned unless you ask, unless you fight, and unless you bring forward the strongest possible case. There were those that will also say that we should wait. The time's not quite right. 
there never is a perfect tide for any ship to be launched. You take the best possible time, and that's right now. So let's go with it, and let's fight for our race. Thank you very much.